These Premiere Pro AI tools are insane. From text to video to generative extend, here are the top AI video editing features that will drastically change the way that you edit videos for the better. Now, a couple of these have been out for a little while now. Others are brand new and you will need to be on the beta version of Adobe Premiere Pro to access them. But the first one is Audio Remix. So I'm over in Premiere and I've got an audio track in my timeline here. And let's say that we want to extend this out, but there's no extra music track here for us to do that. What we can do is we can come over here to our Rate Stretch tool. Hidden under this little menu here is the Remix tool. So now with this selected, if we click and drag now we can extend this out and it's going to automatically make this work for us and it's going to make it sound good too. So I've deselected here, it's now analyzing this clip. So once that's done, we can see that we have a few of these little squiggly lines in our music now. And what this has done is this is showing us the new points where edits were made and things were looped. So let's go ahead and zoom in and let's play back some of these sections here to see if it is noticeable where things have been cut and moved around. This is a music track from Epidemic Sound. Yeah, pretty seamless. Let's try the next one. Yeah, you wouldn't know. So this is a great tool, not just for extending your music tracks, you can also use it to shorten them down as well. So that's remixing audio, but what if we wanna do something similar, but with video? What if we wanna extend a video track? That's where generative extend comes in. All right, so I've got a new project here now. I have three clips in my timeline. These are stock footage clips from Storyblocks. If we scrub through this, we've got a snowboarding shot. We've got a drone shot following this minivan. And we've also got it says a newly married couple walking on the beach holding hands, maybe dancing a little bit. Let's see if we can extend these out using this AI tool. Now we do have the ability to either extend out the start. So if we wanted to make this start earlier or we can lengthen the clip, we can make it go for longer as well. But it is at this point limited to two seconds of extra length that we can add into this. So let's go back to our first clip here of the snowboarding through. I mean, there's a lot going on in this, but let's give it a go. So we want to come down here to this new icon here. This is our generative extend icon. If with this selected, we can now extend from here this clip up to two seconds. At the same time, let's also do the next one as well. Let's extend that out. We can see how far it's progressed on here, generating. And maybe for the newlyweds, let's extend out the start of that clip. Okay, so that's done. Let's zoom in on our timeline here a little bit. We can see that on each of these clips now for the AI generated section, we can see that that area is highlighted here. So if we're playing through this clip here, you can see this last piece here is now generated by AI and it's done a pretty good job. Like you wouldn't really be able to tell. There is a frame here where it kind of goes smooth, but outside of that, I mean, we got a lot of detail, a lot of stuff happening with the snow here. I thought this would be a hard one for it, but unless you're really looking for it, that's gonna be hard to tell if you're just playing this through. It's almost like the lens just got cleared. Let's come across, check the next one. So we had this minivan driving along. Let's just play it from here. And AI starts now. Yeah, you wouldn't even know. It is continued, the car going around the corner. Yeah, well played. And this last one, we had this clip here, newly married couple, and we have extended the start of this. This is looking pretty good. Yeah, again, you would not be able to tell. Even the feet and walking in the water, well played. Now what you can do if you're not happy with how it was generated, you can right click on where it says here AI generated and you can generate again. And you can also provide feedback and say that it was good output or it was a poor output. So the next one is AI text-based editing. And this is something that we're starting to see pop up in lots of different editing tools. CapCut has this now, DaVinci Resolve has this, or there's even tools like Descript that allow you to do this too. So what I'm gonna do is come over to a clip in my project. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna choose transcribe. We then get to specify our language, which it's auto detected for me as English. And then for speaker labeling, we do need to specify whether we wanna separate out our speakers or not. So in this case, there's no other speakers in this clip. So I'm gonna go, no, don't separate. 
transcribe. It's gonna go through and process the audio in that video. It's gonna pull out everything that was said. It's gonna transcribe that and it's gonna give us a text box here. So once that's done, all we need to do is bring this clip into our timeline here. And you can see in this text panel, we've now got all the text written out for us. And where it's got these little dots here, these are any pauses or silences. So we can see this one here, 3.9 seconds. This one here was 7.5 seconds. And there's a few things we can do with this from here. Straight out, we can edit from text. So we could select all of this text here and hit delete on the keyboard. And it's actually removed that from our edit. So we could go through here and we could maybe we want to remove all of this section. We can press delete and it's gone. So we can actually go through and we can edit from text. Now we can also come up here and we can adjust this filter. So let's filter out the pauses in here. All right, so we can see that those are all selected here now. It's as if we've done a search for them and we have the option here to delete them. So we can just go through to delete them individually or we can hit delete all and that's going to go through and remove all of those pauses for us and look at our timeline down here now. It's now actually gone through and performed all of those edits for us. So this is a great way to speed up your editing dramatically. Is it perfect? No, but it's still gonna save you an absolute ton of time. We can see there is one case here where it looks like there is still a pause in there. So we've got a big flat line down here, but to go through and fix up one every now and then is much faster than having to go through and do the entire lot manually. Now, while we're in here, we can also come up to the three little dots up here. We can use this to create our closed captions as well. So if you wanna have text on screen, your subtitles on screen, we can do that here. We can see that those have been generated for us and automatically applied to to our project. And obviously we can customize them up, change the way they look, or we can even edit the text too if there's any typos or any mistakes. And coming back up the top here, you also have the ability to export this transcript. So if you just want the text of what's been said in your videos, then you can quickly grab that now too. Now why I showed you the filtering for pauses, we could also filter here by filler words. So if you've got things like um, ah, uh, so, that you say quite often in your videos, then you can go through and quickly batch delete all of those, removing them from your video too. Number four is enhance speech. This is something that is so powerful and can really help you get great results if your audio isn't great. I've got a worst case example here to show you. Let's play this clip here in the timeline. Guys, this is a test. There is lots of background noise here and uh, a rainbow. We'll see how good this AI noise reduction is. Okay. Worst case, we've got a lot of beach noise. The microphone is just the built-in one in my phone and is not very loud, not very clear. So all we need to do is select our clip here. You wanna make sure that you're on the essential sound tab up the top here, which you can access under window if you don't have that enabled yet. And then all we need to do is hit enhance. That's gonna go through, you see it's preparing, it'll process our clip, analyze the audio, and then improve it for us. And there is this slider amount here as well. So the default for me right now is level seven, but obviously we can dial this effect up or down as we need to. But let's just leave this here at seven. Let's give this a play now. Test the test. There is lots of background noise here and um, a rainbow. Again, is it perfect? No, but is it much, much better and usable now? Yes. Now let's just crank this right up and let's see what happens at 10. Let's play this again. Test the test. There is lots of background noise here and um, a rainbow. So it is clearer. You can see it's actually removed all of the background noise. So there's no wind or wave noise there at all. But the actual speech piece sounds a little robotic. That's why I'd probably dial it back a little bit so it does sound more natural. I mean, you could probably even go around nine or eight here so that you're still getting some wind, some waves, but it's much, much lower. But it's also not degrading the actual spoken piece as much as well. But in terms of real world use cases for this, let's just drop back in this other clip here of me speaking. Let's just play this here. All right, we are recording. Uh, let's check the microphone. One, two, one, two, test. Okay, let's just add a cut in this here and let's process this first piece and see how it enhances that. Okay, now let's play this now. All right, we are recording. Uh, let's check the microphone. One, two, one, two. Let's turn it off. Testing, testing, one, two. 
definitely has processed it a bit. Maybe there's a little less echo. I'm not in a perfectly sound treated room by any means. So you could even use it to improve something that wasn't bad as well and make it better. The next one is scene edit detection. Now this is something that once I figured this out, this is something that I use a lot to be able to go back and easily make changes to videos that have already been edited without needing to go back to the actual project file. Sometimes you don't have access to that. So what this is automatically gonna do is go through through a completed video and it's going to add cuts in your timeline here wherever there was cuts in the actual footage. So enough talking, I'll just show you. We wanna right click on the clip here and we wanna choose scene edit detection. Now we get a few options here, but I normally just leave this here as default. Apply a cut in our clip here at each detected cut point. We can choose analyze. It's gonna go through, this is a 15 or 16 minute video. But you can see it's actually going through pretty quick at detecting those scenes or those cuts. So we can see that's done now. Let's zoom in and take a look and Let's just see our first scene here. We've got a cut. Yep, that's definitely a cut at that point. Cut, let's jump across a little later. Yep, a fantastic job of detecting these cuts. And this is where if we just wanted to remove a chunk now, we can select it, we can delete it, we could replace it with another clip. Makes it so much easier than you trying to go through frame by frame, trying to find the exact place that you had made a cut previously. The next one is Morph Cut. This is something that has been around in Premiere for a little while now, but it's a great tool to help you morph between two different shots. So you could use this to help mask or hide any jump cuts. So in this example here, we've got Saab here and there's a hard cut at this point. So he's talking and then there's a clear point here where it jumps to the next frame. So there's nothing wrong with this. And this is how we create most of our YouTube videos. But if you did wanna to try to hide it, then that's where this effect will help. So we come over here to effects, down to the search box, let's type in morph, M-O-R, there we go, morph cut. And we can drag this on as a regular transition effect. What I've found works best is shortening it right down. It's gonna go through, it's gonna analyze that clip for us. And if we scrub through this now, you can see that there is a morphing that has happened. But let's just play this back. So we've got our first shot here and it's going to morph across into the next one. So it's not perfect here, but if this was playing back in real time, it might not really be noticeable. And maybe we would wanna even go a little bit shorter on this one to try and really sell this effect as just a quick blend between them. So this, where I found it works best is where there's not a big difference between the shots, or you go the total other extreme and have two different faces, and that's part of the effect that you're going for, where someone morphs into someone else. So even this now is a little bit better. Obviously, it's not fully rendered yet, but we can see here that the whole head and everything moves around to continue this shot through, so it's not bad. The next one is AI Reframe. This is a really powerful tool to help you reframe or reformat your shots from one format to another. So the perfect use case of this is starting with a widescreen 16 by nine video. Maybe you wanna repurpose it as a portrait TikTok style video then this tool will help you do that and reframe everything, reposition everything so that it looks good. So I've got a new timeline here with a few different shots. So I've again got Saab, got a shot of me, we've got our snowboarder back and moving around a bit. And then we've got our newly married couple off to the right of frame. So this is our widescreen video here. So all we need to do to activate this is let's just grab our sequence, our timeline here. We're gonna right click on it and we're gonna choose auto reframe sequence. So this isn't just gonna do one clip, this is gonna do the whole lot. You can also apply it on a clip by clip basis if you would like. So it's gonna generate here a new sequence, duplicate the sequence in a different aspect ratio and apply auto reframe effect to all clips in the sequence. So we get to choose our target aspect ratio. Let's go vertical nine by 16. I'm just gonna leave motion tracking here on default and we're gonna hit create. So here is the result. We've got Saab who is now centered in the shot. We've got me who is framed up there and scaled up for the right size here. We've got our snowboarder. Now this should follow the action here. So yep, we're seeing here the board, the snowflake and our people here that walk off shot or were on the right hand side of the shot. Those are framed nicely here for a portrait video. So amazing that this is done literally with a couple of clicks of a button. And number eight is AI assisted color correction. Now color correction is something that 
a lot of people hate or a lot of people get wrong. It's now awesome that there's some AI tools in here to help make this process easier for people. So we wanna select our clip that we wanna make adjustment to. I'm just gonna run with this one here. We wanna jump over to the Lumetri Color tab. So if you're not seeing that, choose Window, Lumetri Color. And then in here, there's now this little auto button. And this is gonna automatically analyze your shot and apply some adjustments to it. So right now we have no adjustments to anything on this clip. Let's hit auto. It's going to make some changes for us. Now in this case here, it's pretty subtle, but we can see that it has made some adjustments for us. And we can toggle this on and off. So this is before, this is after. So it has added like a bit more contrast and stuff to this for us or made it more contrasty. Now we can also adjust the intensity here of this auto effect. If we dial this up, we can actually see the sliders moving here as we move this, then it's just gonna intensify that a bit more. So again, this was before, this is after, and personally, I'm liking the after. Let's give this a go on another one of our shots here, maybe this newlywed one. Select the clip, let's go auto adjustment. Let's preview here, this was before, this is after. Okay, so we are seeing a bit more detail in the back here, it's a little bit darker, but again, we can adjust the intensity of this as well. So before, after, again, color correction is a personal preference, but I love that this makes it so much easier for people if they have no idea what they're doing or looking for a good place to start. So those are my top AI tools in Adobe Premiere right now. If you wanna dive even deeper with AI video creation, video generation, check out the videos that are linked on screen. As always, we've got a bunch of other resources in the description box below to help you even further, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.